on, everybody. Bear Bets Podcast is back, European Championship style. I'm your host, the Bear Chris Fleek. I'll be joined uh, shortly by uh, Stu Holden and Jeff Schwartz to uh, kick around what's been a very uh, entertaining and interesting first match day of the uh, the, the European Championships. We uh, had some subpar performances, maybe you would say, from England and France, and certainly uh, some fluky performances from Belgium, where they're probably uh, deserved a better fate. We've seen some uh, some massive upsets from uh, Romania and Slovakia. So we've had a little bit of every. We, we, we've seen nothing from the, the biggest stars in the game, the guys that we thought uh, were going to win the, the golden boot. Uh, an injury for Mbappe, broke his nose. So how, how does that affect things? Uh, it, it's been, it's been look, I, I, as, much, as great as the World Cup is, uh, Euros, I, I love the Euros. It, like the quality of play, the, the depth of play, and just seeing teams like Albania and Romania and Slovakia and, and Georgia that, that were expected to be the bottom of the table in, in their groups to come out to see them come out in the first game and, and play so well. And some got results, some nearly got results. Uh, it, it shows that this tournament uh, is probably a little bit more wide open than some people may have thought going into the uh, into the event. So. We're through the one round to play. We, we, everyone's played one game. Match day two will be starting uh, on Wednesday. So uh, without further uh, without further delay, let's uh, let's bring in Sue Holden here to uh, to break down what we've seen so far and what we could expect moving forward. All right, J- Jeff and I are now joined by Stu Holden to break down the first round of match day matches in the uh, Euro 2024. Stu, it seemed like. Coming into the tournament, most people were defaulting either to France or England uh, to win this tournament. And then we saw England go out the other day, and it was kind of a ho-hum, 1-0 win. Uh, Harry Kane didn't score. Bellingham was fantastic. And then France came out, another 1-0 win on its score on an own goal. Mbappe got hurt in the match. Are we kind of concerned a little bit? Like, did we think England should have been more dominant? Uh, are we concerned about France with Mbappe injured? Uh, or is maybe, uh, as we've seen in the past, we've seen Spain lose their first group play uh, match and win the World Cup. We saw Argentina lose their first match match play. Win the, is this maybe a, a thing of an overreaction or maybe a tough first match could be a good thing in the long run? Yeah, so I, I think a couple of things. I think when you think about England, I think they were overpriced a little bit to begin with. Uh, in my opinion, I think like the defense isn't strong enough. I think down the spine not good enough to win the Euro, but yet we fall in love with the individual name. So I think it's a case of that with England. When it comes to France, what they've historically done when they've won tournaments is build into the tournament mm-hmm. slowly. Now, the Mbappe one is an interesting one because with him having the broken nose, it's alleged that he's going to miss the next match that potentially impacts the golden boot race for, for killing Mbappe. But it also presents opportunities now for them to get some other guys like Giroud maybe some more mm-hmm. minutes, Marcus Turam some more opportunities in front of goal. The French team is stacked. I'm not worried at all about France. I, I'm a little bit more concerned, and I think actually the realism on where England stand right now in this tournament. We saw a historic upset with uh, Slovakia beating beating Belgium. Does that change sort of how you feel about Belgium? I didn't like Belgium to begin with. I, I just think that this, this Belgian team isn't complete. They have a first-time head coach in a big European championship. And in many ways, you're relying on Romelu Lukaku to produce and score goals. He didn't do it in the World Cup in 2022, wasn't in the same type of form. And now you're, you're this golden generation of players that we thought of that overachieved, they're not really there anymore. And I don't think this next crop is quite ready to take that next step. So as far as Belgium goes, I was surprised that they lost to Slovakia, but I think it's a further reflection that I don't see this as any more than a team that's going past the quarterfinals. You're right about Lukaku because I saw some unbel- someone sent me a tweet the other day, and I can't remember what the handle was uh, or the specific numbers, but it was like at halftime of the match how in his previous 90 minutes of Euro play, he had like something like 2.6 expected goals and obviously hadn't scored, and that was before the second half when he missed a couple of other opportunities. So, like, in his last, like, 135 minutes of Euro play, he's, uh, he's, he's, really he's, streaky, he's had yeah. a, lot of, uh, a lot of trouble scoring. Most dominant performance, do you think, in the, in, in the first round of matches? Like, you could make a case, very good case for Germany. Was that a great Germany, really bad Scotland, a little of both? 
I personally thought Spain were the most impressive team because Croatia has some class and some world-class players on that side. What they did and just coming out and dominating Croatia uh, in that first game, I thought was super impressive. I think maybe people were sleeping on Spain a little bit, but but Germany, Spain, do you have a preference as to which you thought was the most dominant or was it someone else? I, I think I was most impressed with Germany in the first match because, look, Spain, let, let's not get some completely carried away with the fact that they won that game 3-0. Croatia had a lot of chances and didn't convert uh, on those ones. So it was almost their lack of finishing. The expected goals was actually pretty even between those two teams which shows you that Spain were very efficient in front of goal and Croatia were not. And I think you're going to see a bounce back from Croatia. I still like them around the quarterfinals in this tournament. And then as far as Germany, if you laid on them pre-tournament, you got to feel, be feeling pretty good. Mm -hmm. Scotland were horrific, all right? <laughs> Scotland, you disappointed me and perhaps overflattered Germany a little bit. But if you're thinking about a team and being the host nation with the pressure coming in and you were worried a little bit about Germany going out in the group stage of the last two World Cups, this is a team that got almost every attacking player a goal. A guy who was just called up to the roster two days before gets a goal. They got to rinse their bench, take off some guys, rest some key players. They should be flying come game two, and I, I would be feeling pretty good about Germany getting at least to a semifinal. Is there one player, coach, team that your opinion has changed about most, good or bad now, through the first four days? Oh, boy, that's a good one. Um you know, Lukaku, <laughs> I, was, I was really disappointed with. I, I, you know, I thought he might be in the mix even for the Golden Boot because I felt that Belgium had a pretty easy group that they would cruise through. And what we are going to find out, even the other two teams in the game, Romania looked fantastic in, in that group. So that's going to be a bit of a battle to see where they place. Um, Italy, they built into the tournament. I'm trying to think of real surprises. I, I think... I was disappointed with Harry Kane, to be honest, with England, and I felt that only two touches for him mm -hmm. in the first half of that match, and he was dropping too far at times on the ball. Now, you heard some comments from him after the game. He was actually saying that Gareth Southgate asked him to stay higher and occupy the three center backs to make space for the other players. You don't want to hear that if you've got Harry Kane for the golden boot because <laughs> you want him in the box finishing off chances involved in the buildup, getting touches, getting a rhythm. So I think you might see a bounce back game from both Harry Kane and Phil Foden come game two. I'm glad you mentioned the surprises. We were talking about this before we, we came on out. The teams that we expected to be the bottom feeders, Romania, uh, Slovenia, Georgia, like they all Albania, they all came out and played great first matches. Like they all had legitimate chances to get a to get a result. Not all of them did. But uh, it just goes to show you the depth in this tournament that even teams that you expect to be uh, propping up the table, as the legendary Peter Alice used to say on the uh, the Open Championship telecast, uh, but the last place team or last place player. But it was great. And you met, you hit on Golden Boot. I, I, this is an interesting op opportunity now, I think, because I was not in the camp of playing any of these favorites, M Mbappe and Kane, to win the Golden Boot. But now you have it with, with, with Mbappe not scoring, with Kane not scoring. Uh, Lukaku not scoring. Uh, I, the, the, the guys who were the favorites did not score. So you can look at this two ways. I'm curious how to feel, how you feel about it. Is it a chance to buy low potentially on a Kane or Lukaku? Or is there maybe someone further down the board to maybe take a chance on a play? Because I think we've had, what, 29 goals or 30 goals so far in the tournament? And no one has All multiple goals. No one has multiple goals. <laughs> yeah. So from a betting standpoint... There's an opportunity there. You just got to figure out what it is. Yeah, I I, I believe when, when I came on with you guys pre-tournament, I was liking Cristiano Ronaldo with Portugal. And I think it sets the scene and sets the table for them. And he was long a lot longer money than the, the, the two or three favorites. And, you know, Golden Boot is going to be tricky now, I think, what we've seen. I'm interested to, to, to see what happens come game two because – you talked about some of the, the teams like Albania that, that turned up and caused a little bit of problems, Slovakia. So I think perhaps what we've also seen is some of the bigger teams historically and some of the bigger favorites for the groups maybe underestimated some of these opponents in the first match and now will be prepared for that in the second game and that these teams came out pretty aggressively, caught them off guard, got some early goals, and then you had to see the reactions even from Italy against Albania when they went down with that early goal. So I wouldn't be panicking too much yet about the big stars coming through when they need to and producing goals. And for also for coaches 
to find systems and tweak to get their best goal scorers in front of goal because ultimately that is the difference between a team that's going to go to a round of 16, quarterfinal, and then a semifinal as well. So I, I, this is, I think, not going to be one of the top two. If, if I had to pick now, I don't think it's going to be Kane or Mbappe. I, I could see somebody a little bit further outside of that that's in the mix. You guys have mentioned Albania a bunch. Of, am I going to have to sweat that Albania wager that yes, we made we on the last show? Yes, we Albania are. No, 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 to finish you're last fine. In the, in Jeff, the group? you're fine. You, Don't worry you about it. You cost me some money on this? <laughs> They're good. They're, they, they came out. They, they got that early goal. They had their moment. Croatia's going to turn the heat up, and Spain's going to make, oh, make do with them okay, as well. Good. You're good. They're, they're um, going to finish last. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, there's too much Albania talk. I was a little bit, a little, little bit worried. Um, Stu, what, you mentioned kind of coaching throughout here. So what, what is a coach doing sort of between, you know, match one and match two to sort of maximize the effort? I think for a lot of us, you know, there's not a lot of you know intimate coaching that we see happen during the game. So, so what are they doing between, you know, now and, and sort of, you know, game two to, to, you know, to, to get their team in the right positions? Well, I, so some of the biggest things and some of the things we've talked about here is how France with probably the best, if not, you know, they're definitely a top two or three offense in the Euro, England as well. All of these coaches will be looking about, okay, look, how do we try to set our team up to succeed, to create goals, to create scoring opportunities, to get guys like Kane and Mbappe in front of goal and scoring position? And then secondly, the, the big thing for coaches and, and where their focus would be on us, how did the opposition stop us from doing those things. So it's, you know, either a position of a strike or, or dragging Kane out to the left, bringing Foden inside when it comes to England. And also, like, Mbappe should have scored. He had a one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper uh, in that second half that normally he's burying that chance. Now he misses the second game. We might see him for the third. But it, it's it's combinations and really making sure, again, that they can get the most out of their team for this next Let game. Let me ask you a ridiculous question, Dean, that you mentioned. <laughs> no Mbappe. ridiculous questions. Yeah, no, it, it kind of is. It's an interesting theory, idea. And I was actually talking with Alexi uh, Lalas this morning uh, on the way over about this. Being that Mbappe sitting on a yellow, would you put him out there, <laughs> have him pick up the second yellow in the in the second group stage match at some point, and then that way he doesn't potentially miss a round of sixteen or a quarterfinal? Oh man, that's a uh, that would be uh, what we four, call four D uh, chess. I, I feel like I can say it. That's what we call shit housing. Where it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can say anything. You find, you find a way to uh, you know kind of bend the rules. I, I wouldn't be against that. I think that would be slight, slightly controversial in, in soccer circles against the spirit of the game. But look, you, you know, we you, I would throw, I would consider doing that as well. If you, if you don't think Mbappe is going to play, put him out there for five minutes, tell him to go slide tackle or trip a guy, and and then you, you've got him free rolling. He's not a player, though, that typically picks up yellow cards. And even the yellow card he picked up in the first was match sweet. was because he came back yeah, on the I, field too soon. So I, I don't worry about Mbappe. Is there a favorite wager that you have uh, the next couple of days as we get into some of these uh, these game twos for all these teams? I, I, I like England in the next game to uh, over two goals for sure. I, I, I think that the first match, I think, Barry, you were we were talking about yeah. them being over two and yeah. a half and uh, that, that the Serbian defense were really, right yeah, away with they, that. they were playing tough and, you know, they're they're big, they're physical. And I, I just think you're going to see England build into this tournament. Jude Bellingham talked about it a little bit before or after the game saying, oh, you know, we see all the goals flying in right now and we only scored one, but that doesn't matter. We, we, we have confidence in, in our offense. So I, I like England in the next game to, to pick up some momentum and, and, and pick up more goals as well. In, in, that, in that spirit, I'm going to be playing. I haven't looked at what the number is. I don't care what the number <laughs> is. I will be having a very significant position on Belgium to win that. Uh, second round, second group stage match against Romania, uh, and we're probably going to get a little bit better. You might get better odds I was now, say, too. Because yeah. Romania yeah. will look great against Ukraine, who were totally disappointing. And uh, look, that's, that stuff with Belgium is going to reverse itself with the, all the goals that they should have had. So uh, Bel usually I am not someone who is just going to come out from the uh, preflop and bet aside to win. Uh, I'm more of an under guy in soccer, uh, team total under. But Belgium to win, that, that's going to be a very big bet for me. So I mentioned Bel I mentioned Belgium level of concern between Belgium, Croatia, Denmark, three teams that we all kind of thought were going to get through. Uh, which is a higher level of concern for you amongst those three teams if there's a level of concern at all? Uh, oh, it's a tough one. Um 
My, my higher level concern was on Belgium because they have some of the bigger name stars in Lukaku and De Bruyne. Uh, Luis Openda is a, a, an exciting young talent. And I was so disappointed with the way in which they performed in that game and, and couldn't even find an equalizer uh, against the Slovakian team. It, by the FIFA rankings, the biggest upset in Euro history. I would argue the biggest uh, upset ever was Greece going on and winning the, the tournament. And then... I, I am really fascinated, though, on, along those storylines to see what we get from Croatia this next uh, match because this is not a Croatian team that's used to taking a beating the way in which they did, 3-0. And, and I talked about the, the chances that they had in the second half and how they responded a little bit. But their coach, it was so bad, he came out, Zlatko Dalic, after the match and, and apologized for that performance. This is one of the most passionate, dogged, nasty teams that we've seen on an international save. And boy... This next game for them, they're going to come out and try to try to put up a number. Well, I think we covered a, a a good bit there. I have a couple of more questions, but we're we're, we're going to let you go. I'm very excited about the potential for the for the young player of the tournament between Musiala, Bellingham, and uh, Lamal. Like, like you've got yeah, man, three unbelievable players. Plenty of Verts all. might be in there too for Germany. You've yep. got some great potential prices there. To uh, and it's not like not like you can bet one because it's probably going to be go to the player whose side advances the furthest. So we have, a, fortunately, a few more weeks to kick this around and, and, and have you on and, and get your, your knowledge and expertise, Stu. Appreciate you, as always. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Talk Appreciate soon. it, man. Appreciate Stu hopping on with us, uh, breakdown uh, round one, and now, of course, looking ahead to round two. Uh, it'll be curious to see how the angle that Stu had, I, I really liked about like the, the big names, uh, maybe underestimating some of the... Uh, uh, the, the bottom feeders in that first match, and now maybe you get your uh, your legs under him. I think if you're looking ahead to to, to match day two, I, I, I would actually look at, um, as I mentioned, I can't suggest as a best bet playing <laughs> 220 or 250, whatever it is, uh, for uh, for Belgium to to wind up beating Romania. But I, I would play Belgium to yeah. to beat Romania if you if you have the appetite to lay two dollars, fine. If not, throw it in a parlay. Uh, I would maybe look at. Uh, Croatia, Albania under two and a half. I think Croatia will look to potentially solve some of their defensive woes. Uh, I do like Spain to beat Italy. I think Spain have been the most impressive team in the tournament. Uh, Italy is as good as they were in coming back to beat Albania. I think that they do have some issues maybe on that back line still. Uh, I, I do like Spain. And then I would take a look at, um, at Austria, Poland under two and a half as well. Uh, Poland were better than I thought they would be in that first game, but they really didn't threaten much uh, after getting that first goal. And I think Austria probably deserved a little bit better fate in their first match against France. So um, I, I would look at Austria-Poland under two and a half as well. So uh, look, looking forward, Jeff, those are three yeah. three individual games that I, uh, that I looked at. I wasn't sure if you had any other big plays, big picture, or maybe even something in the second round that you liked. Well... One thing I, I did notice from the early games, um, I'll get your opinion on this, is it felt like the the underdog, right, the team that we didn't expect to, to score a lot or, or play well in defense, they controlled the pace in a lot of these games. We were texting back and forth because we had certain wagers on, on these games. It, it did feel like the favorites were sort of behind the pace. Did it feel that way to you? Like, are we looking at a yes. situation where the favorites maybe over goals uh, in a lot of their in, in a lot of their 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 second their second matches here. Yeah, I, I think that might be a good a good way to look at. It. I'm typically an under guy, but I do think you might get uh, some opportunities with some team totals here. Because, like I said, with the, with the England match, like Stu and I were talking about, I thought England would come out and put a number up. But Serbia, just the way they played, did not allow England to to really have much freedom and creativity to to score. But I think now, as you get into that second match and teams kind of realize they need a point or they need a win, they need three points, things have a tendency to open up here in this game. So I, I think maybe this round you might see uh, so some higher scoring to team totals. Maybe Belgium get on the board for, for, for three goals or so. England get on the board uh, for three goals or so. So I, I think I, I like your thought process uh, there there as well. Like if you're looking at a couple of like golden boot type futures, it's interesting because – like Stu and I were talking, and, and you and I were talking about, like the fact that none of the big guns scored, no goals from Ronaldo, Kane, yeah. and Mbappe, uh, whomever. Like it opens up the opportunity potentially for one of those longer priced uh, opportunities. Like I went and played 
three guys that I thought maybe because they're on the board now. Yeah. Uh, I, I play Levine well, Lamal is not. Uh, Levine Lamal from, from Spain who had opportunities. I played him at 45 to 1. I played uh, Musiala at 23 to 1. He's got a goal. And uh, I, I played Lukaku at 16 to 1. And I know the odds here are still 12, but the fact that he had opportunities, and I think Belgium were one of those teams that are going to be better fits in that in, in that second game. So I played those three guys at, at longer odds. So I, I don't know if you had any, any any thoughts on any of those guys, or maybe uh, maybe you buy low on a Kane or, or someone like that. Bear, I just need to cash some wagers in this tournament, Bear. <laughs> I don't care what what it is. It needs to happen. It has been a slow start to the Euros for, for your boy here. And um, it is a good, it's a welcome to soccer wagering with all the VAR, like all the, we've had some, 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 some goal uh, opportunities, some shots on target that just haven't gone our way mm -hmm. with some of these superstars. Um, uh, what's uh, the guy on, on Belgium? Lukaku. Um, who, yeah, I'm going to wager, I'm going to hammer his goal score. I mean, he had two goals taken away. One was an offsides. One was a, a questionable handball. And um, so it does feel like we're going to get these these goal scorers to really come through. They've just sort of been unlucky, right? Had opportunities, just haven't been able to cash in. So I'm looking in that direction for a lot of these teams, as, as I think you're right about, I don't know for, for Golden Boot, but just taking some of these individual props, shots on target, goal scorers, things like that for some of the superstars that kind of started slow. Yeah, uh, Spain are a team that I'm buying as well. I think their, their price is still very, very worth Worth a worthwhile play. I think they'll beat Italy. I think they'll top that group, and uh, I think they are a dangerous team uh, moving forward. If, if you're looking to 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 beat a team like France or or England or Portugal or, or Germany, uh, I think you, if you you go down the board and Spain being the the fifth the fifth uh, price right now, uh, I think I would think after seeing Portugal last match, those odds will change. But again, uh, you don't want to jump to conclusions because like. We said earlier, we've seen Argentina and Spain in the past win the World Cup after losing their first World Cup uh, group play match. So I wouldn't necessarily say France and England off of poor performances can't win or, or Belgium can't win because they, they lost that match. Maybe Belgium can't win because they're just not good defensively. But, but I, I think Spain is, is a really good uh, bet to win moving forward. So. You don't Belgium have anything else, not Jeff. Scored, by the way, Belgium did not score in either of the World Cup games two years ago. No. Did not score in game one of the Euros. They're having a hard time putting that ball in the net. Yeah, no, they, they are. And those things, usually with so many expected chances, you have an opportunity. That, that, that should reverse itself, and we'll see if it does reverse itself. So uh, so that, that wraps it up for, uh, for, for match day two, uh, match day two preview, match day one preview. Review. Thanks to, uh, to Stu for hopping on with us before. I appreciate you uh, downloading, rating, reviewing, subscribing, checking us out on on YouTube as well or in wherever else you uh, consume and download your podcasts. For Stu, thank you. For Jeff, thank you. Oregon Green, duly noted. I'm the Bear, and remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.